Hypochondriasis is the topic for this video. Now, this is a psychiatric uh, disorder, so let's get started. Hypochondriasis, you can kind of think of it as something that doesn't exist in the sense that um, it's really, uh, there's nothing wrong with the patient. So, what the patient does very simply is uh, the patient has this fear of having something wrong with them, like a serious disease, fear of a serious disease or illness. And as a result, the patient will create many uh, symptoms uh, and um, complaints to the physician, uh, despite the fact that all the tests are normal. And this will go on and on, and this is often a chronic problem. So that's an ex extremely bare-bones uh, brief uh, introduction to hypochondriasis, but we'll talk a little bit more uh, about this uh, right now. All right, well, let's talk about this hypochondriasis usually starts in you know when the person is in their early adulthood and uh, it's usually equal among men or women and the symptoms well the symptoms could be anything you know they could be physical symptoms you name it uh, from uh, GI symptoms you know they could be cardiac symptoms like uh, you know increased uh, heart rate uh, you name it uh, I mean uh, diarrhea constipation uh, sweating, cramping, pain, anything really. There's no set you know, symptoms, any any kind of symptoms. They can also vary with location, quality, duration. And they're, they're, they're significant because even though there's nothing wrong with the patient, this fear, the, the key thing here is fear, if I can spell it correctly, uh, fear is the main issue here. It creates a situation in the patient where it really impairs them in their jobs, uh, uh, impairs them in their social life and and that's that's a problem that's probably the, the the real problem the symptoms are all you know fake or or just imagined and like I mentioned this can be chronic it can go on and on and this hypochondriasis can be significantly uh, detrimental to their day-to-day -day behavior and day-to-day -day life so how do you diagnose it you have to sit down with the patient and really talk about what's going on and these symptoms, by definition, have to be greater than six months. And all medical tests, obviously, medical evaluation uh, needs to be normal. And if this is done, then with usually the help of uh, a primary doctor or a psychiatrist, we can start to treat the patient. Now, how do you treat them? Well, there's nothing to treat, right? There's no actually. There's nothing wrong with the patient physically, but it's more of a it's more of a psychological issue. So there's a few things. The first thing, of course, is, and this is proven, that you have to create a trusting relationship with the doctor and the patient. And where, what the licensing exams always write is regularly scheduled appointments. Regularly scheduled appointments. And this has proven to help uh, alleviate some of the fear and uh, anxiety and uh, complaints uh, of uh, constant uh, symptoms. The second thing is uh, if if needed, uh, you know, a psych eval to see if there is a comorbid condition such as depression or or um, something else. And if there is indeed some um, depression, then adding a medication such as such as an SSRI can can be beneficial. All right. Well, we've talked a little bit about it. Now let's get into a vignette to see what kind of uh, stories we can find with these uh, types of uh, patients. So here we go. It was a big long one. 53 year old woman comes to the office because of a discreet right sided breast mass. She says that she discovered it in the shower nine months ago. It has been uh, to uh, six different physicians uh, for evaluation. None of the other physicians were able to palpate this mass and so they told her that it must be in her head. This is the first time you are seeing the patient, so you're asked to review her complete history. She is a married homemaker and is the mother of two children who are both out of town colleges. Her husband is traveling salesman. She has not had any medical problems in the past, and her family history is unremarkable. Menarche was at age 14, and she is still menstruating. She exercises three times a week, eats a low-fat diet, drinks one to three glasses of wine a week. She has normal pap smears for the past 30 years, has never had a mammogram. She tearfully tells you that her best friend died of breast cancer two years ago. She denies any episodes of sadness, insomnia, or feelings of hopelessness, helplessness, or guilt. 
Physical exam is completely normal. You cannot palpate any breast masses even after she guides you to the exact location on the right breast. You send her for a mammogram and breast sonogram and tell her that you will let her know the results as soon as they return. The results, which return in two days, show normal breast tissue and no abnormalities. You have your nurse call the patient and tell her to schedule an appointment at her convenience to discuss the results. Today at the return visit, you explain the results of the test and she still seems to feel that there is something there. You try to be as patient as possible and tell her that there is most likely no mass present. She looks at the ground and says that it will show up if you order more studies. This is a very good, a rather long clinical vignette um, that uh, talks basically about hypochondriasis. Okay, and you can clearly see that that fear element uh, that exists in this patient. My gut instinct is that uh, this woman is completely normal. Uh, she doesn't have any psychiatric problems and she even uh, denies that um, but the fact that her friend uh, her best friend died two years ago uh, I think is is what's causing a, a lot of this uh, fear so how do you treat it what do you do advise her to voluntarily commit herself to hospital for psychiatric evaluation that's a bit extreme at this point remember that doesn't that isn't done immediately first you have to kind of uh, build a trusting relationship. Encourage her to get a second opinion. Well, that's just tossing the patient. You don't want to do that. Order a CT uh, or order a fine needle aspiration. Well, these two are further testing and you really don't need further testing. So the next one, the last one, schedule regular weekly 15-minute appointments and recommend that she also sees a psychiatrist. This is exactly what we talked about. So the answer, of course, is E. That's what you call building a trusting relationship.